All right, that is the song Trick from our special guest coming up. He is a 30-year-plus veteran of the New York music scene, hasn't left home, still records, tours, and uh, just right in the Big Apple. Uh, the band is Milo Z and the lead singer and producer, drummer, Milo Z. That is called Trick, which a uh, great video on YouTube and kind of was a lead into the election of this past November. Mm -hmm. We welcome our great friend, I think the third or fourth time on the Upper Room. Uh, it's not Upper Room anymore. Joe Kelly Radio, sorry. Uh, Milo Z, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. How you doing, Joe? Yeah, it's good to be back. Good. Yeah, good Good to see you. We're like an hour north of where you live. Um, let's kick right into uh, the video of the song that uh, we just heard, Trick. Um, when, when did you uh, shoot the video? Because it's kind of tough shooting videos these days, right? Yeah, we shot that one. Um, let me think about that. I, I, I guess we started in 2019. Oh, okay. We started that one in 2019, and um, but we still, uh, no, no, we, we started recording the song in 2019, and then we uh, shot the video in 2020, um, and, um, you know, uh, that was right when uh, things started to hunker down, you know, like some of the shots you see, uh, you'll see people with masks, ma right. wearing masks, you know, um, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, uh, it was my protest, my protest video. It seems like um, the last few songs I released, they've, they've seemed to be more on the political tip these days, you know? Right. So you don't get with orange. That's a great line. I there. don't, I, I don't dig, I, I don't dig orange people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah I, I can't, I can't, I've, I've just started drinking orange juice again, actually. Oh, okay. Things are getting slightly better. Yeah. Tangerines, I'm eating tangerines. Um, for a while I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stomach it. No, too much pulp. Yeah. Right. Right. And of course, uh, from New York City, um, right in the center of the beginning of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, we, Connecticut, we're not too far from you. It, it was bad here, but you guys, man, I, I felt so much for you guys. And how, how did you, first let's get, when was your last gig on stage with uh, Milo Z? I, okay. I mean, before, before the pandemic, really. Yes. In. So we had just, it's weird, we had just gotten in a, a short tour in Greece in February, um, that was that was awesome. We and while we were over there, we started hearing, um, we started hearing about, you know, COVID and, and the pandemic. Um, and it's funny, uh, I was hearing about it, but but the, the places were still packed. The the, the clubs, it was it was right. a great little mini tour. And then when when I was um, coming back on the plane, I noticed there was a couple who was like, um, you know, thoroughly masked up you know, M95 masks. And um, I was like, okay, okay, this is getting a little intense. And um, that was the end of February. <clears throat> then when we came back, uh, I think I had two more shows, uh, I think early March before everything just completely shut down. I think I played uh, the Stanhope House in Stanhope, New Jersey. Right, and it, right. And it was, it was still a decent crowd. Um, and then I think I did a red line on Bleecker Street, and, and that was pretty slow. And um, and then all the other gigs I had uh, coming up, like the, the, the in the following weeks, just got canceled one by one. They were like, uh, you know, we don't know if we're going to do it. We're going to do maybe smaller bands, or and then there was just like no no bands. <laughs> so um, right, right, everything just pretty much shut down for all entertainment, basically. Yeah. Well, what's been the toughest thing besides, you know, of course, money coming through for, for musicians? What's been the toughest thing for you? Um, you, you know, having things um, change so abruptly. Yeah, it's like, OK, um, well, besides just the, the bizarre world that, that, that we were living in and, uh, you know, uh, you know, saying, is this is this real? Is this really happening? And and. Uh, uh, you know, not playing that, that, that feedback from an audience, uh, you know, right. you're so used to doing that, you know, uh, like, like you said, I've been doing it for 30 years, uh, Milo Z funk. So, um, it, 
musicians, it kind of defines who we are. What, what you do is who you are. So if you're not doing it, then you say, okay, who am I? <laughs> right. 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 Um, so, and of course, um, through the city, there's been so much that's happened. New York city. Um, so much. I mean, you know, yeah, the protests and uh, absolutely. So yeah. New York, New York, of course, got hit really hard and, and first because, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's the hub, right? New York, LA right. and stuff. Um, and New York, because, you know, we're, we're all living on top of each other, the subways and stuff. We got really hit hard. Um, people coming from Europe and, uh, um, so, uh, you know, that, 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 it was a scary time. It was a scary time. Um, and, and it's still the, the city, uh, and then of course it just shut down, everything shut down and, uh, it was eerie. So, um, that's when I wrote that, 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 that next song, uh, calling out, which right. was about the basic, what was going on, the lockdown and, uh, yeah. And, uh, I, I had to do something to just keep creative, you know? Um, so what can we do? We can write. Yeah. What, one of the things that I noticed from afar is that you, you haven't just sat back and thought about the glory days. You're, you're on the internet, you're, you're doing positive, uh, you know, talks about, you know, things going on and speaking your mind. And of course you, you've uh, people, l- let me give the uh, YouTube channel, Milo Z funk, right? Uh, yeah, uh, what is my 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 YouTube channel? I, yeah, I guess if you just Google uh, uh, YouTube, put in Milo right. Z, right? Um, maybe it's just Milo Z or Milo Z right. Funk, Milo Z Band. It, um, it'll come up. Yeah, it'll come up, and um, yeah. So so you know, been putting out um, the, like the trick video. I wanted to definitely get that one out bef- before the election. Um, right. And so you're it, happy with the result, uh, like like myself. Yeah, um, it, it was it was it felt like you know empowering, you know, to be be able to yeah. do something. I mean, uh, uh, you know, music and art. Um, a lot of times, is a reflection of the times. You know, uh, a, a lot of my career, I, I've made a lot of you know good funky music that people love to dance to and um, have a good time. It's all about the party. And, I, and I'm into that. I'm into grooving and, and, and just rocking the house. Uh, but I don't know. It's, it's been such interesting uh, times that, uh, you know, the music reflects. The music reflects that. I wrote a song called uh, Rubber Bands. I think I put that out in 2019. That was about like school shootings and being a parent. I'm a parent. So, and, yeah. and um, my kid's school had a lockdown, <clears throat> a drill, um, mm-hmm. which, which, you know, was something that uh, we never had when we were kids, you know? Uh, I mean, earlier on, they had those drills where you get under your desk when, when the bomb is supposed to be coming. Right. But, right, right. but, but, but nowadays, uh, I, I guess that's the one, one thing about COVID and the shutdown, schools are closed, so there's no more school shootings. That's a positive, right? Right. Yeah. So, so um, talking about New York City and everything, you you grew up your your beginnings in the Lower East Side. You still live in the Lower East Side? Still in the LES. Yep. LES. Yeah. What What was it like uh, back then, growing up in, in the music scene? Because you know, down down there in the villages notorious for so much history how did, how did you first get into music you know um yeah you're absolutely right like the east village lower east side had so so much going on so much art like it was it was a cheap place to live you know so so artists would flock there and they they could they could you know get a cheap rent and 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 do their art um there was a lot of musicians uh you know a lot of salsa uh um a lot of a lot of small clubs and um uh, you know, on the Bowery, the five spot and, and all, all these different, um, the grill. I remember this, this place in the grill. I got started playing drums. There was a Sunday jam at a place called Dan Lynch's, which is on second, which was on second Avenue between 13th and 14th street. And, um, it's a blues bar. 
And right. I, I was walking by there one Sunday afternoon. It was probably I was probably about sixteen, and and there, I I heard this great music coming, you know, out the door. Um, it was the blues, <laughs> and right. um, it just drew me in, and I was kind of like, you know, peep, peeping in, and and and, and the, the bouncer at the door is like, yeah, yeah, you can go in, you know, as long as you don't drink, you know, and like, yeah, just want to check out the music. So I went, and I got in the Coke. I got a Coca Cola and, and sat down and and there was there was a bar right in front of the band. There's the bar and then on the opposite side of the bar there's another bar where you could sit and the, the band is on the other side. And I just mm-hmm. watched watched this blues band and I think it was um, I think it was Bill Dicey band and there was this great drummer uh, Charles Honeyboy Otis, okay. amazing 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 guy um, who was so cool. Uh, uh, such a great drummer and, and, he, and he wore a suit and he had a toothpick and um, I, I was just mesmerized. And then I don't think I played that Sunday. I think I just watched. But then um, the next Sunday I came down and I signed up on the list and and and, you know, sat in and started doing uh, playing Green Onions. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, maybe did a tune or two and uh, the other musicians were like, yeah, cool. And maybe some musicians were like, you know, you're slowing down, man. You know, so um, uh-huh. I sort of got my um, cut my teeth in Dan Lynch's playing the drums. Who influenced you uh, as a drummer growing up? Oh, well, I was big into uh, Led Zeppelin. So okay. I love John Bonner. Right. You know, it's that fat, fat beat. But I but also um, l- love jazz. Not that okay. I could really hang. Uh, that tough with, with 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 you know playing jazz. Um, I don't think my chops were up to it. Um, but you know guys like Elvin Jones and 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 Max Roach, Buddy Rich, and uh, uh, but oh, and I also really liked um, Mitch Mitchell. You know Hendrix's drummer. Okay. And um, I started playing. I got into a band with um, this guy Johnny Allen. <clears throat> you probably know Johnny Allen. Yeah, yeah. Been around for for years. A uh, great blues rock guitar player, and um, I joined his band when I was like seventeen, uh, and we started playing Dan Lynch's on a regular. And the the band was called Fizz Ed. And okay. We would we wouldn't get the good nights. We wouldn't get the Fridays or Saturdays, but we'd get like Tuesdays and stuff. But it was real cool, and it, um. You know, if uh, and we made a little money and, and it was good response. And um, and uh, then I started playing with some other bands. I got into a band called Joey Miserable and the Worms, a famous, uh, you know, uh, bar band that, that played Nightingales uh, pretty much every weekend. That, that Nightingales was right down the street on 13th Street and 2nd Avenue. OK. Uh, and uh, I played drums in that band for about four, four or five years before I finally like put my own thing together and became a front man, you know? Right. And you've got such unique uh, singing voice. And, and when you rap too, um, how, how do you gravitate to doing lead vocals and being the front man? Yeah. So, so when I was in this band, the worms, I had written a rap song called buddy bug. It's kind of an anti-drug song sort of inspired okay. by the message. Yeah. Grandmaster, yeah. Message. Yep. And, um, and the bass player, in the worms fancied himself a drummer and the Mr. Joey miserable, the guitar player liked to play the bass. So he actually jumped on the bass. The bass player jumped on the drums and I came out front and rapped this rap song, buddy bug. And I just got like a, a, the, the taste for the spotlight and uh, for the front man, I was like, wow, this, this is, this feels good. (laughs) <laughs> um, it's so funny because, um, they actually, uh, John, the other guitar player for that band, like re-released some, um, of the old Worms recordings. And, um, there is a recording of Buddy Bug. <laughs> There's actually a video of Buddy Bug, um, on YouTube from the Worms at Nightingale's like 1985. I'm rapping. And, and wow. I just listened to my voice then and. Although I, I did have, I could rap, I, it was like my uh, voice hadn't changed yet, <laughs> you know? So I, I sound real adolescent, real high-pitched. Right. I can't listen to it, you know? <laughs> I'm going to uh, have to check that out. 
Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Um, but then um, I just started writing other types of stuff and trying to sing a little bit. And um, there was this blues singer, uh, Mo's, Mo Holmes. He had this band. Oh, Mo- yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he became a really good friend of mine. He, he was- Yeah, you guys staple. were real tight, yeah. Yep, he was a staple at Dan Lynch's and he was in the Holmes Brothers for a while. And um, oh, okay, yeah. he was really encouraging as far as singing. He was like, yeah, you got something, you know, uh, you know, go stick with the lows, stick with the lows. And, uh, you know, so I kind of like, I could hear the lows and the harmonies were starting to come. And I learned a lot from, from Mo about singing. And, he used uh, to play a lot at the club next to the bitter end, right? Next to the bitter end. Oh yeah, the red lion. The red lion. Yeah, yes. I, I still was up until about nine months ago. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. So Milo Z is with us, and um, I was just thinking about what you were talking about. Maybe we could have met. I was in living in New York in '82. I went a semester at NYU. Okay. Only a semester. I left town. I should have stayed there. But I don't know if I told you the story. Rick Rubin was living in our dorm, just starting up Def Jam Records. Wow. I, I had no idea he was living there until I read about his story and everything. But yeah, that was '82. So you were in you were in the scene just about starting around then. Yeah, I was in, I was playing drums then. I was I was in the Worms. It, 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 I okay. think it's just around April '82, or maybe I had just gotten out. Of, I think I had just graduated high school around then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so maybe '83 or something. And uh, um, yeah, I was playing Dan Lynch's Nightingales, and then. Uh, Right around, I guess, 90 is when I put together my band. Right. Okay. And Milo Z, of course, well, well known for having a kick-ass band and great stage performance. Uh, I was talking to G, my wife, about a show that we saw in Norwalk, Connecticut years ago. You were there. And um, my experience, we went in there. We were close to the stage. By the third song, we were pushed by the crowd to the door. And she goes, you remember that girl spilled all her her beer all over your clothes i didn't remember and i don't drink so i i should have remembered but i didn't i don't I have no recollection of it wow. but uh yeah you got everybody loves the milo z i mean how, how how'd you get into uh developing your stage presence you know to, to where it is today you know i'm a big james brown fan so so um i uh i just love that 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 showmanship that that mm-hmm. and 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 the band being so tight like that um uh the dance steps and stuff so i just started incorporating uh trying to get the horns to do uh some simple moves and and um at first i was wearing more street clothes when I, when i first came out you know just like sneakers and stuff but i think Maybe Moe's influence on me. I started dressing a little more old school, like three quarter lengths uh, uh, jackets and stuff like that, and shoes, and wearing a, a bowler or derby, and and uh, you know trying to be a little bit more flashy. I remember Mo said to me, <laughs> um, "You should never look like the people in the audience." Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's that old school thing, you know. Um, right. So, so I, I got more into that, but, um, so I was rocking, rocking, uh, rocking the, the stage clothes a little bit more, you know, I you gotta have the, and you gotta have your handkerchief, right? Match oh, oh, my handkerchief. Right. That's kind of like my, that's like my Linus blanket. Actually. It's like, <laughs> it's to wipe my brow, but it's kind of like an, uh, security thing. When I have that in my right, hand, right. if I don't have that in my hand, I'm like, I'm missing something. <laughs> But I remember um, James Brown had this one suit. It was a black suit with um, three three uh, crystal rows down the sleeve. I think the left sleeve. It had three rows of crystal. And I was like, that okay. is bad. And I, I actually got a custom suit, a little similar, but I got five rows of crystals down the, the arm. And that's oh, my wow. And, and <laughs> that's, I think that's the most money I ever spent on a on a wardrobe. <laughs> I don't so think I do. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think I do that again. But um, that, that, that's, 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 that's my uh, most outrageous um, 
outfit, I think. You know? No, I think you do a great job. Very stylish, of course, clean all the time. And, uh, you know, I think it's exactly what Mo told you, you know, stand out from the crowd you're performing to. So. Right, right. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, you have to be in a three-piece suit. I mean, I remember Mo, one time we were doing a gig at Wetlands, and he came out with um, a, a guinea tee cut off at the belly and he had a belly so that was quite a look you know <laughs> yeah, that's different. It just meant you don't look like the audience so you know i mean p funk right. you had a guy coming out in the diaper i guess so yeah so, yeah i you know. i had gary Scheider on the show man oh yeah. wow yeah so right so it doesn't have to necessarily be a right right suit. just you know do something to stand out mm-hmm so they say hey yeah did you see what milo was wearing did you see that guy on stage that was right something different. right <laughs> Yeah. So uh, you've worked with various musicians over the years and um, Joe Copeland's been one of the guys running with you the longest, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, um, used to guys still work together or are you having Joe, a while? Joe, um, you know, um, Joe played with me for 29 years. He unfortunately, he didn't make the, the, the 30th anniversary show, which was a couple of years ago. Um, okay. Joe is upstate in Poughkeepsie. He's doing well. I'm talking to him. Um, uh, he was, he's in a program, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to get himself together. You know, he, it was a bit right, of a drink right. going on. And, uh, so he's doing well though. I just spoke to him like last week. So. Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Tell me, said, what's up, you know, think I will, you know, I will, Joe, I know he remembers you. So, uh, yeah. you know, he had to get out of the city. Uh, yeah. you know, um, sometimes the city can be rough and, uh, and out of the bar things, bar scene stuff too. So, you know. Yeah. We wish him uh, wish him some great sobriety. So I definitely cool. will. Yeah, he did a, he's a year clean. So okay. Hey, that's great. Yeah. Oh. I I had I had a similar journey. I stopped a, a while back, but yeah, I, I know the struggle very, very closely. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Milo Z is with us here, and we're uh, enjoying talking about the latest creations from Milo and of course uh, going back to his 30 year career. And uh, we, we've talked about your connection with Greece, but to refresh the listeners, how did, how did you get it? So you're pretty much over there every few years or so, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it was just a promoter who saw me in, in New York, I think in a club in the village maybe, and um, liked the band. And, and, and there was a club over there called, the, there's a club over there in Athens called the Half Note, which is kind of like a blue note here. Okay. You know, right. that same type of vibe. They do mostly jazz and stuff. Um, and um, I guess he brought one of my CDs and they dug it. Uh, I think it was the CD I recorded at Tramps live and bumping. And it oh, had okay. that 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 had, you know, the live vibe. I think he had taken the previous CD I, I put put out, which was um, basically to how which was a, a studio CD. Um, but I don't I don't think that like did the trick but when they heard the live cd and the audience response and how the band sound, sounds live they were like yeah we can get with this and then uh it just grew from there i just they really uh appreciate the, the funk the, and the and the razima funk more specifically right right so razima funk of course i saw it on youtube uh that that was from greece right um well razima funk is is what i call my music it's just, just right, the, right. the combination of rhythm and blues, rap, jazz, and funk, and rock. So that's just the, the, the moniker I came up with. Yeah, there was a groove, I think, for your 30 year. I think it was put up there in February, celebrating 30 oh, years. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Check that. That's great live. Yeah. Where was that recording, Greece? I, I, I believe that that was, um, I believe that that was at the cutting room. Yes. The 30th anniversary oh, okay. was the cutting room. Which is a great, okay. um, great sounding room and, and really a pretty room. Um, so many clubs you performed all around the tri-state area. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned Tramps recording there. That, that's one club I miss. We used to go see Morris Day in the time a lot there. We saw Sheila E. And, uh, oh, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, Tramps, you know, you, you miss that club a lot? Oh, yeah. That, uh, uh, yeah shout out to Steve Weissman. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite places to play. Uh, we, we did a lot of double bills um, and openers for, for great acts. I, um, I saw Morris Day there. I don't think we ever opened up for him, but we opened up for like Chuck Brown many times, oh, Maceo wow. Parker, um, mm -hmm. Average White Band. Um, 
And of course we headlined there too. So um, it was just a great, they had some great acts coming through there. I saw Ray Charles there. Wow. Um, <clears throat> that was, that was, that was a great venue. Uh, I, I think, well, they started out, I think on 14th street, it was a smaller club, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, um, and then they, when they moved to like 20th or 21st street, I think it was, that's, that's okay. when we were really playing there. Yeah. We used to, when we would see a show, we head right behind the soundboard and you'd be elevated. You could see the whole, whole show yeah. perfectly. Yep. Yeah. I remember we played a oh. show there. I think we had opened up for Chuck Brown and, and Prince. Okay. I walked, the Prince walked right by me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he, he was checking you out. Oh, I, I, I don't know if he was checking me. I, maybe he showed up right, right when we got off. I don't know. I, I know we had just gotten off and he, he, he could have seen us. I don't know. Right, right. The mysterious prince. All, but he, he was yeah. always, till, till his last week on earth, he was uh, checking out live music all the time. So. Absolutely. So I think, I mean, I know he loved Chuck Brown, you know, the godfather of Go-Go. So. Right, right. Uh, Milo Z just joined us. His website, Milo Z, M-I-L-O-Z dot com. And, uh, you know, your, your band now, you always have a great band with you and guys. And uh, who, who's in the current band? I see some of the, some of the people jam with you for a while, but you tell me who. Absolutely, in the band. you know I got a I got a different um, roster of players, you know. So um, uh, right now uh, I got uh, Jocko Jake Marley on bass. This is like one of my oldest partners. I grew up with this cat, great great bass player, really holds down a groove. Um, I have a few different guitar players. Um, uh, uh, Emilio Tostado plays with me. Uh, Sung Wong Kim, um, uh, who else? Oh, Glenny Styles uh, okay. from Boston. Um, um, oh, Frank Ocasio plays with me sometimes. Frank Frank is uh, Frank is the guitar player who used to be in the Authority. Oh, okay. Oh, you and, just posted a video of him I saw on Facebook. Yeah, maybe. You know, um, yeah. we're actually. Um, it's funny. We're we're actually collaborating on a song right now oh um, okay so big shout out to, to big frank yeah um it's a song called new york city is burning so okay. um look for that it, um it's it's lately i it seems i've been doing more co collaborating uh since this lockdown which is which is right. something i don't haven't normally did you know uh the the last song and video i put out calling out <clears throat> that was of course about the lockdown and covid and then um, this, my brother Harvey Morris, who, who was a drummer, uh, who used to play with me. And um, I think we went to Europe together for the first time, like back in like 95, 96. He, okay. uh, I posted something on Facebook with me and my keyboard, Casio, just singing the song Calling Out. And he liked it so much that he hit me up the next day and sent me like a version where he added some background vocals and like a preacher rap. And okay. um um, he really dug it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Thank you so much. And he was like, yeah, man, I hope you don't mind. I was like, no, not at all. And then um, the more I listened to the song, like I hadn't recorded it yet, but the more I listened to hit the version with him on it, I was, I was like, you know, I, I like it. Let's, let's yeah. do it. So, so we, we, we started working on it together. And, and it, at, at first the song was mostly just about COVID and the lockdown and, right. you know, going through in New York and, um, but then uh, George Floyd happened. And um, mm -hmm. uh, so the song changed a little bit to, to also reflect what was going on there with, with the protests and, and justice and things like that. Um, yeah, another another great video. And I hear a little Motown beat to it, too, right? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. It's got that Motown groove and um, uh, people have really responded to it. And, and that that video was really interesting to shoot because I was just you know riding my bike around new york and the street the streets were so desolate you know there's a shot in the video of times square and i'm looking down times square from like i don't know 50th street straight down and it's just completely empty um and then you juxtapose that with with the protests you know that came in the spring and the summer right so it's it was a really it been a really interesting time in the city uh uh so um uh, you know, I wanted to document that in, in the video. And I think we did.
I think it's like almost like a new uh, a news clip of, of 2020 in New York, you know? Yeah, there's been so much that you've lived through through this whole COVID and, and before that. And, you know, you kept it on the positive tip. You you guys went out and uh, did some park jams. I, I saw you. And it's cool seeing you play percussion and sing too and seeing yeah. people's reaction walking yeah. by. Yeah, where where where'd you guys when do you decide where to set up if, if it's kind of an impromptu jam? Yeah, you know, um first we I, I got I got a cajon, you know, it's that box you sit on and right, right. And, yeah. and, and, and it was kind of like, okay. Um the first time we did it was in Madison Park on 23rd okay. Street by the Flatiron building. Okay. And um it was really really cool and, and the people were like out on the lawn they really really dug it eventually the parks department came over and, and, and shut us down uh because they said you can't have amplification you know oh okay yeah which i understand but it's kind of ridiculous because there was another band there that had like a bunch of horns that didn't oh. have amplification amplification right. and the drummer was so loud i mean like they were louder than us but you know it's a technical law so we moved to the divider between the park and fifth Avenue right by the Flatiron building because, because, and, and we played there and that seemed to work out fine. And, um, um, Oh, then we also played by the cube a few times. Um, I think when they called the election that Biden won, we, that we were out there that day and that was just what an awesome, uh, moment it was. We had to get out there and play on the street. People were just like dancing in the streets and, um, I was so glad that uh, just to, had to be there, had to be out there, had to be playing. And of course we played trick, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Who's the guy who impersonates uh, Trump? Oh, that's, that's Carlo, Carlo Fiorello. Big okay. ups to him. Um, you know, I put out a, 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 an ad, I don't know, on Craigslist looking for somebody to play, play Trump. And I didn't get a lot of responses. Actually, I only got one, and it was from Carlo. And Car- Carlo is awesome. He's like, picture this little, uh, picture like a little Joe Pesci type guy right. with, a, with a blonde Trump wig and orange <laughs> Cheetos rubbed on his face. Right, and right. That's what you, that's what you got. I think he just comes off great. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. I saw some comments on the video though that that he dances too good. Trump is not that good at dancing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely not. <laughs> no, no. Um, so I had a lot of fun, fun uh, doing that. And and um, yeah, doing that video. And uh, oh, man, big up, big ups uh, to my man. Oh, sh- who shot and edited the video. Oh, I'm having a blank right now. Uh, yeah, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Right, right. Yeah. yeah no, another uh, another scene that, you know, we talked about the Lower East Side, but the Greenwich Village, another the village, another place where you guys have done numerous memorable shows there. And uh, it, right before COVID, was it the scene had it changed quite a bit? Um, the East Village, yeah. Well, it was before COVID and the lockdown. I mean, it was hopping. I mean, I'm not going to say that it was cool as it once was. Um, it was more a lot, a lot more. Um, sort of like frat kids and um i mean it's still a very very diverse neighborhood um but maybe a little less less diverse or less culturally diverse like it seemed like you'd go to a bar and you'll it'll be just uh you know frat boys or i'm I'm, you know less less eclectic uh, mix, you know, um, okay. just like kids who want to be around other kids that are just like them. You know, where back in the day you would go to the village and you 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 go to the village because you, you want to be around different types of people and experience different types of things. Now yeah. it's more like um, kind of like the yuppie thing. Well, you know, but uh you know, you know what I'm saying. It's kind of like yeah, I know. they just want to be there with their frat buddies and take right, over the right. club, and it's all yeah. of them. Where back in the days, you go to like a uh, Dan Lynch, and there'll be there'll be old an old man at the bar, and there'll be different types of people at the bar, and then there'll be young kids, and then there'll be college kids, and then there'll be artists and stuff like that. It's, right. it's less like that. So the cooler places are harder to find, and the cooler places, you know, 
they try to keep it a little on the down low so that, you know, you know, uh, it's, it's not just like all the same type of people, you know? Yeah. You play at the red line and next door, the bitter end. And, and you guys saw with days of wild, a lot of guys jam back and forth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your horn player uh, plays in days of wild too, right? One of them. Um, oh, 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 Joel, Joel Cruz yeah. was playing right. that band. Yes. Um, yeah. I noticed big, big shout out to Joel. Uh, Joel moved back down to, uh, Georgia. Uh, oh, okay. Um, either Macon or Atlanta. I'm not sure. But, you know, and that's that's because of uh, COVID and the lockdown. You know, it, it's hard. Yeah. You can't make a living right now, you know? You got so, Thomas Hutchins. Uh, oh, Thomas. Boston. Thomas is the one who – Thomas has been playing with me off and on for years. Big big shout yeah. out to Thomas. He's also the one who played the beauti- beautifully on Calling Out, on the Calling Out song. Oh, okay. He's featured on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's him in the video too. And um uh the the song I think um uh ends around five minutes and 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 his solo comes in at the end, but I have a longer extended version of that song that I will put out eventually that it goes on for another minute and he's just played so beautifully. I got I gotta put it out just because of him. I look forward to hearing that. And also um you got you guys have done some gigs. Who's the uh, the Milo Z doggy in the video? I saw you play a small gig recently. Barking. The Milo Z what? Yeah, it was a dog barking while you were playing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Where was that? Kid that's at? funny because my daughter just got a got a dog. We got a dog about seven months ago. Um, oh, okay. Basically, a co- you know COVID dog. You know they, they can't go to school, right. they can't see their friends. So I think a lot of people are getting dogs. But right. no, that was a private event we were playing. I think that was that was in the fall, and um, uh, it was a, a wedding anniversary, and it was uh, okay. It, it, and uh, and they had they had the dog they had the dog there, and and it's so yeah. funny. I don't think we were, no, we definitely weren't playing the song "Dog" because I don't really play that song too much anymore. But we were playing something funky, and the dog was just barking, you know. Yeah, you were rocking your purple suit then, right? Rocking your purple suit. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cause I, cause it, it was funny because I was watching the video and uh, my, my own dog. Uh, I heard the dog. My dog's up. Uh, my dog's boyfriend, little dog is, is a dog who looks exactly like that. Okay. So I said, well, I've seen that, that kind of dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So funky. So, got the dogs barking. What kind of, what, what kind of dog do you have? We got a Shih Tzu. Her oh, name okay, is cool. her name is Cookie, and she's like, I, I call her a I, my my name for her is a ridiculous little creature because it is not a real dog. It's like a toy, you know. It's <laughs> it's 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 really um, it's you know it's one of those uh, pick it up, put it in your your pocketbook type of dog, you know. But um, yeah. it's really uh, really uh, makes my daughter happy and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm it's, sure. It was like a lot, like a, 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 she wanted a dog for for years, and 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 had been asking, and like, oh, I don't know, you know, because well, I had a dog way back in the day, but that was before Poopy Scooper. Oh, that was right, right when right. Poopy Scooper laws came in, and and on the Lower East Side and the Bowery and stuff, like nobody was yeah. picking up after. I mean, there was bums doing their business between cars, so nobody <laughs> was picking up after the dogs, and I certainly wasn't. Right. Um, I think in my juvenile delinquency, I even like stole a, a pooper scooper sign off a, a, a post <laughs> or something. So, but so I wasn't into getting another dog and stuff. But but then you know this COVID, uh, you gotta you gotta do, and it, it was per- perfect, perfect. But it's but it's must be tough in, in the city having a dog, right? Or do you have places you can go? Um, well. I mean, with the little dogs, definitely in the and the snow. Although Cookie likes the snow, um, oh, okay. you know. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, there's little parks. You know, I'm I'm right around. Um, there's a park, uh, Christie Street Park, right 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 on Houston Street there. Um, okay. You know, go go to Washington Square. They got little dog parks there, and at Tompkins Square. Oh, you, you you brought Cookie to the small one there. Yeah, the yeah, little the, the little exactly. one exactly exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we got a puggle dog, and we go to the the park up here. They got a river and everything. So, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, you got to keep the sanity and keep the happiness in the home. Man. Absolutely. You know, it really does help. I mean, they, I, I mean, I, I had a dog when I was, you know, a young t- teenager and stuff. And um, I hadn't had a dog in so long. They just, all they do is, uh, you know, give you love. I mean, there's, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And these days and times, you know, when we're all locked down and stuff, it's, it's, it's really important. People who don't like dogs, it says a lot about them. Right, and right. Um, if you remember, a certain uh, orange fellow didn't have dogs, and I don't think he was too cool. So uh, yeah. that, that says a lot, something that right there. And now, now we got a, a good guy in there who's got two beautiful German shepherds. And uh, I think I think I think I like dog, dog people. Mo actually, Mo once said to me when my dog died, uh, he, he he said I like I like dogs better than most people, and I re- I always remember that. You know, right, right. That's why you, you like Mo so much. Oh, Mo, 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 Mo was my brother, man. I mean, Mo was like an uncle. You know, he was a bit older than me, but that was uh, that was in a real, real original, uh, real person, real cat, and a really one of the coolest uh, guys on the earth. You know, um, um, and what what a talent! What a talent! Um, it's funny because I was talking a story. He, Mo, Mo used to play Terra Blues every Sunday. And um, I remember I would go down and sit in with him sometimes. And oh, that's one time, the club I was talking about next to Bitter End, right? Uh, Terra Blues. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And he would play there. And I went there a couple of times. And, and Tom Jones was there checking him out. And, and, oh, wow. And I, and I was sitting with Tom Jones. And, and he said to me, you, you, you can't learn that. And and I, and I was like, and I was like, I hear you. And, I, and I'm like, and, and what specifically can't you learn? And he was like, that tone. Can't learn that tone. Mo had such a great, beautiful tone to his voice. And yeah. I was like, yeah, you're right. And I think, I think, uh, I think Tom even invited him to to come to Atlantic City and 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 uh, sing with him on stage. I don't think that happened, but I, I remember. Right. And, and, and uh, that day I actually sang with Tom Jones background uh, for Mo at Terra Blues. And I think we were doing Stand By Me. So that was pretty awesome. Every Sunday night it was? That was every Sunday. Yeah, he did it for years. Mo Holmes and the Pioneers. Yeah. So Milo, I know you've been jamming and uh, recording some songs and uh, anything. Well, I, I, you're probably waiting for the. Uh, the sign to say go but how about live stuff you got anything tentatively lined up you know um yeah um this summer i think uh we're i think things are going to start to open up a little bit this summer maybe more in the fall but um i know we're going to do some more gigs up in vermont there's a place up in chester vermont that has an outdoor space um you know what i'm gonna give a big shout out to them uh uh the country girl diner uh okay. Jess, great, great, great lady. And uh we played there last fall and we're gonna go up there again this summer. And uh so uh and hopefully some more stuff is gonna open up. I think we're gonna do a little bit more playing on the street. That's more for the love than than anything. You know, we we put the tip bucket out and uh you know, guys make a little bit of money, but it's more just to just to do what we love, you know, that, that we, you, you know, um gotta get you back up to Saratoga. Spring oh, yes. track. Yeah. Oh it's right, true. that's right, yeah. Saratoga, right, and um, the the casino, right. I also play. What do I play? Yonkers, Yonkers Raceway, and right, right, Yonkers, yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, continuing to to write and uh, trying to put out new music, and like I said, um, um, right now I'm collaborating with uh, Franco Cassio, uh, the former guitar player for the Authority, and we're working on on a song called um, "New York's on Fire," and it's basically about um. People leaving, running, fr- running from New York like like it's on fire, and uh, right. you know how uh, you know the city is going to come back, and uh, you know uh, so so I'm 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 working on that, and I'm working on some other things. So I think this is going to surprise people. Something to do with uh, uh, music, but also a little bit of acting. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So lots of lots of great things. The future's bright. He's always positive. Got to keep going, right? Gotta, gotta get to the vaccine. How, how close? How close are you to getting the vaccine? Um, 
I'm not that close. Um, uh, but but I, I think by the springtime, I, I can hopefully get it, you know. Um, yeah, my wife and I, my wife and I, we can uh, start trying to set appointment uh, this Sunday, Mar oh, March yeah? 1st, first Monday or yeah, we're finally eligible. Good, good, good. Um, yes, I, I, I heard, I think yesterday there's another, a new vaccine now. It's only one shot. I think that's, um, is that from oh, yeah, John Johnson? Johnson and Johnson, yeah. Uh-huh. So, yes, I mean, the sooner we all do it, the, the better. And, and in the meantime, we have to keep being diligent, wearing masks, and, um, you know, trying to uh, st stop the bleeding, so you know, so to speak. Stop stop the hemorrhaging, you know. Uh, stop, hey, stop. Honest, yeah, go ahead. Stop making things worse. Um, uh, you know, try, try, try to, you know, just hunker down a little longer and, and you know, be responsible and, and get out the truth and, and stop the disinformation and st it, it, it stop the politics. You know, it's not red. It's not red or blue. It's, it's about mm -hmm. life, man. It's about, you know, we can either go down together or we can go up together, you know. So, yeah, New um, York's burning, but Milo Z is not running away. He's going to. That's right. Stay planted right in New York, I'm sure, right? Absolutely. That's born and raised. That's my home, you know. So, New York, thank you, brother, man. No, no, go ahead. Joe, so appreciate it, man. I, I love your show. Um, you know, you got you got such a great history. I mean, you were the first radio station on, on, on Prince's website. And, and that there's a reason for that, you know, because you play you play real music. You play such a nice variety of music, too. You know, um, and, and you play a lot of funk and soul and and uh, and you're just a real cat, man. And, and, and you you welcome musicians uh, uh, local and otherwise, you know, so so cats who are trying to get their foot in the door, get their music heard. Um, and and of course, you know, well-known uh, bands who, who've been doing it for years, who, you know, cool in the gang and et cetera, other other bands who, you know. Right. We love, too. But you also play artists that are trying to, you know, make some noise for the first time, you know, so we really appreciate you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, and always, you've been a great friend to our show and great guy. And, uh, and look forward to seeing you back on stage, you and the band. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. MiloZ.com. And also definitely check uh, out the yeah, YouTube for Milo Z. Yeah. Check out the YouTube, check out, uh, uh, the Instagram. I, uh, that's, let me see. I get them mixed up. I think the Instagram is Milo Z Funk. Okay. Um, I think the Twitter is Milo Z Band. And the Facebook is Milo Z Funk 2012. Okay, perfect. And definitely and check out the videos. Reverb Nation uh, yeah. page. My Reverb Nation page is Milo Z Funk. And you can check out a, a lot of my music there, too. Oh, and, and of course, Spotify and all that stuff. Yeah. Good thing you got a unique uh, name, so. Right, right. Yeah. Now you got now you got to put the space between the the O and the Z. Though it's Milo space Z. It's not That's Milo. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Milo. Joe, here's some more it. music. Yeah, more music from Milo Z. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother.